For your next project, you will be making a rose window. A rose window is also sometimes called a Catherine window because um, they're named after St. Catherine, which is kind of interesting. And you can look up more information on that if you want to. But the one that you see here is the most famous of the rose windows. And so I'm going to show you how to get started to make your own. First, you need to know that the main point of this assignment is to teach you about radial symmetry. Um, you've learned about symmetry in science class, probably where um, if you draw a line of symmetry down the center of something, everything on one side is the same as the other. Well, in radial symmetry, you'll see that um, each section of the circle is the same. So it's sort of like this picture of a wheel here. Um, the spokes on the wheel divide up the sections, and um, that's kind of how we'll make our project. We'll make a basic circle with divisions, and then we'll design within each of those divisions to make them all the same. Here's a more modern version of the same concept. If you look at a hubcap or a rim, you'll notice that each part of that hubcap is the same. No matter how you divide it, it's the same. So um, you're basically going to be creating a design that has that same principle. And as you can see, it even occurs in nature when you look at this example of a flower. There's many more examples I could show you, but instead of spending time on that, let's get started. First, you'll begin with your templates. You'll need your circle template, and you'll also need a pie slice template. You'll go ahead and trace your circle onto a separate sheet of paper and cut that out. And then there's one other thing that you need to do. So you have a choice to make. As you can see, there's two pie slice templates here. One says eight on it, the other says 10. The one that says eight is a little bit larger and will mean that you only are able to fit eight of those designs within your circle. The one that says 10 is a bit smaller and you can fit 10 slices in there. So the 10 one is a little bit more complex than the number eight. So decide what you'd like to do and um, you can get started from there. If you chose to do an eight piece design, you can go ahead and fold your circle into eight pieces like this. Basically, I folded it in half, folded that half in half so it was in fourths and folded it in half one more time to make it into eighths. You'll need to create three continuous designs on your template. So the template that you've traced and cut out is the one that you're working with here. You'll take your ruler and measure along the edge and mark um, three different measurements where you'll have a continuous design going across. So you'll want to mark on this side as well as on this side so that your design will line up. So now you'll create your design and as you can see I drew my design out on my template. I did it in pencil so I could erase and change things if I wanted to. And remember the measurement marks that I made? I made one on each side so that this is like an inch and a half from the top, an inch and a half from the top on this side. And that's just simply so that when I put my pieces together, I'll have a continuous circle going around. Also make sure you make your lines dark so that you can do this next step. Get out that folded circle that you made earlier if you were doing an eight piece or if you're doing a 10 piece, your circle's still flat. So um, whichever circle choice you did, get that out and line up your template with one of the sections. Flip over your template so that the pencil side is against your circle. For the next step, you have two options. Option one is to take a popsicle stick and hold your template firmly in place while you rub across the back of your design. That will help to transfer the pencil lines to your paper. Now you can see that I have transferred some of those pencil lines onto my circle. They're not really dark, so I am going to have to go over and trace over them again. The trouble with this method is if you don't really um, rub over each area of your design, then you may have some parts that are hard to figure out. So this, design, this way of um, transferring your image may not work the best for you. 
or it may be the easiest for you. So you may want to try this or you have another option. Option two, which is the option that I chose on my circle, was to um, take my template and tape it so that it's showing underneath my circle, tape it to the window and trace it because as the light shines through the window, it makes it easier to see my design. Fill all of your sections with the design that you chose. And as you can see, I've completed my design. Now for the fun part, to make it look really great, I'm tracing over all of my pencil lines with black marker, and I'm also filling in some sections, as you can see. Here's my finished design, and here also you can see what I was talking about when I was talking about a continuous element. This element continues all the way around the circle. It connects to make a ring. We also have a connection here and here. So I have three areas where I've made a continuous element and that's what all the measuring was about was to make sure that um, this would line up all the way around the circle. If I had not measured I would have had a problem. Also, um, as you can see the finished design uh, looks pretty nice except there's one problem. If you look really closely, you can see my pencil marks, some stray lines that are here and there in my design that aren't really a part of my finished work. So all I have to do is go ahead and take my eraser and erase them. Remember to be gentle with your eraser. If you um, press very hard, you may risk tearing your paper or um, causing it to wrinkle or, or um, having some other issue. So, erase gently and you'll have more success. The last step is to add color to your design and keep in mind that you can add all of the same color in um, some of your elements for example coloring all these outer circles the same or I could alternate I could have rainbow colors or I could alternate between a few colors um, you'll want to check and make sure that whatever your plan is is going to work out evenly all the way around your circle. Otherwise, you may be disappointed when you come back around to the place that you started and find you have two of the same colors next to each other. So think about how you're going to color not just these outer circles, but also the other elements to make a more interesting design. And the more uh, variety of colors that you use, the more thought you put into it, the happier you'll be with it. So don't get in a hurry in this last step because um, this is the danger zone of a project when you feel like you're almost done and you get in a rush. So take your time and do a good job. Okay, so this is my finished example with color and as you can see I um, used a pattern to color in my design. And if you look really closely, you can see that I made one mistake. If you can't tell where my mistake is, then you probably, if you make a mistake, um, don't need to stress out about it because you probably won't be able to tell when, where your mistake is when you're all finished either. But do a nice job and um, pay attention to your details so that um, if you do happen to make any mistakes, they'll be hidden. And... Um, in the next slide, I'll show you some examples of other, um, other rose windows that are real stained glass windows, and maybe you'll get some good ideas for yours.